In this video, I will show you all you need to know about sub modeling in less than 15 minutes, and we're gonna use a very simple example to do it. Let's go. sub is an interesting subject because it's extremely easy to understand and explain, but it's a bit more difficult to execute because it requires a lot of patience and also practice, because sub is a bit more abstract than Ngon and Boolean workflow. This is exactly why we recommend Boolean and Ngon workflow for beginners, because it's much more intuitive, much more fun, much quicker. And also, when you're gonna be actually working with subdivision if you need it, then Boolean workflow is gonna become very handy, the same goes to add-on workflow, and I can tell you this from my experience. So, you know, starting with NGONs and Booleans can be very beneficial for you because you're going to be actually enjoying the uh, learning process of, uh, you know, hard surface modeling in Blender. Now, before we start, let me tell you that uh, if you're confused about anything I'm saying here and you don't know what the hell is going on, you're probably a complete beginner, so stick to the end of the video because you'll learn a lot. But if you want to learn hard surface modeling in Blender really quickly, then I suggest you grab our free course, which is called Jumpstart Hard Surface in Blender. It's really simple, really easy, and in a few hours you can literally learn everything you need to know to get started, including the UI, the tools, how to model, all the techniques, you know, what to pay attention to, the basic add-ons, which are free add-ons, by the way, in this course. And after this course, you will know what the hell is going on, and you can, you know, start creating your own projects. Now, the course is free, like I said, and the link is in your video description. Now, going back to SubD, I can explain you SubD on this plane. Everything you need to know, I can use this plane and explain you SubD literally on this plane. So let's create it from start, yeah? So I'm going to move this to the side a bit and I'm going to create a new plane here and we're going to cut it with box cutter. This is where our add-ons are coming in and booleans. We're going to split this uh, corner here a bit and I'm going to create um, five edges and four edges. Now, why is it important? It's important to have a multiplication of four edges and corners because it's easy to connect them to a quad and I'll show you this in a minute. I'm going to grab the uh, knife tool here and I'm going to connect all these edges first to create quads on my plane so I don't have an end guns and then we can start talking about subdivision. Okay, so let's connect these, let's connect these and I believe that's it and we're going to connect these two and you can see that we have two quads in here and everything is peachy. Now there are three major things you need to know and understand about sub D in order to create the really good sub D models. First of all, is going to be the topology size and quality. Second is going to be topology flow. And the third one is topology control and redirection. So let's talk about first the size of topology. Now, topology size is important for two things. Okay, One of them is shading and the other one is actually topology stretching. So let's talk about shading first. If I'm going to, let me just delete that. If I'm going to grab the cylinder, and put it in here so you can see the cylinder has quads all around here right now these quads have a one specific thing in common and that's that they all the same okay all the same size and they actually spread it evenly and they're in the perfect circle and this is why when i'm going to at auto smooth the cylinder is perfectly smooth if i'm going to move any of this uh, of these edges even if i'm going to slide it slightly you will see we're going to have a distortion and shading okay and that's the reason why you want to maintain uh, even size of your topology, especially on uh, curved surfaces. It's not that important on flat surfaces, but uh, you know it's a good practice because even though you're on a flat surface, you can actually use the topology to create details. And I'll show this to you in a moment as well. Since we have quads everywhere, now we can subdivide this mesh manually. So we're going to add four, vets in, uh, four edges here. We're going to add four edges here. Uh, let's add three edges here, two edges here, two here, and one here. And you can see now we have a really nicely evenly spread quads everywhere. These are slightly bigger, but that's okay. It's not a big problem. So if I'm going to deform this mesh, if I'm going to shift D and copy this, and I'm going to rotate it and apply rotation, and I'm going to use hard ops to deform it, you will see that uh, this mesh will deform really nicely, and I'm going to subdivide it, uh, maybe Control 2 to add two subdivisions, and then when I'm going to go to my matte cap, you'll see that the, you know the shading is really nice and clean. But if I'm going to change the size on a part of this mesh, let's say dissolve this edge, 
you see you're gonna get this nasty flat surface right or if i'm going to move it let's say i'm gonna move it somewhere here you're gonna get a pinching here and you're gonna have a flat surface here so even the spread polygons and even size of polygons and is really important and that goes not just to quads but goes to every single mesh that you're working on if you have end guns on a curved surface you also want them, want them more or less in the same size and the size needs to be small enough to support the curvature okay another advantage of having a uniform mesh is that you can create details very easily so for example if i wanted to uh, slap a circle in here what i could do is select this uh, you know vert here drop a circle with hard ops make it a bit smaller and then you know connect these edges here to create quads and i'm gonna have a really nice small detail here on this mesh and this is going to deform really nicely as well maybe they're gonna be a little bit of a pinching uh, but uh you know not too much really it's gonna be barely visible so let me show you i'm going to subdivide this as well and i'm going to um, duplicate it here and let's rotate it and then we're going to apply rotation and we're going to again bend it with hard ops and uh, let's just put this mud cap here boom and you can see that the shading is really nice and clean and that's because we have a uniform topology okay so this is really important so it's not just quads guys but you need to have a specific quality of quads all right you need to have you know you need to make sure that the quality of topology follows uh what you want to achieve okay another thing that's really important is topology flow so let's grab this edge here uh, around and I'm going to show you what I mean by topology flow. I'm going to extrude it down and uh, you can see that, let me just add another loop just to make it a bit more pronounced. You can see that we have a nice highlight going around this mesh, but here we have a bit of a problem. You have this flat surface. The reason why the shading is flat here is because the topology flow is just simply incorrect. If I'm going to drop two loops here, you can see that these two loops are actually diverging here in this corner and they subdivide in the corner. So um, the topology flows this way and this is going to be redirecting the highlight this way. What we want, we want topology to, to follow the um, this edge all around the mesh so this uh, bevel is going to be really nice and clean. And the way to achieve this is really easy. All you need to do is select everything on this plane here. So we're going to select all these polygons and then we're going to inset it. So I'm going to press I to inset it and create a loop around the mesh. And now you can see that this loop goes all around the mesh and uh, creates a really nice and even um, kind of an edge flow around the mesh. So this is essential for any corners, any bevels, any bends. You want to surround your elements or details with a topology flow that actually corresponds with their shape. So you see now this highlight is really clean because there is a topology flow going around this loop um, of quads, yeah? So what we've done, we simply redirected the topology flow. So we simply controlled the topology flow in a way that goes around this shape, all right? So that's really, really important. Another really important thing that you wanna learn is how to control your mesh okay so for example if i wanted to uh, create a sharper corner here what i could do is i could run these edges like this right to create a sharper corner and then i could simply uh, delete these two and then i have quads around and also i change the flow around the corner you can see that the flow goes now around the corner and of course i need to connect these to the bottom otherwise it's not gonna work Right. and you can see now that my corner is nice and sharp but it's also very clean now in this situation we have a little bit of a different size of topology here but if you really needed to you could just simply slide them a little bit out and you're gonna be fine and you know more or less you got a similar size here they're slightly smaller here but what you could do you could kind of uh, ease it off by uh, controlling the um the size here um going from really small to larger to even larger and to you know to the regular size here right so just move these edges a little bit and you're gonna get it's kind of like a amplifying effect you know small larger larger and then the regular size so gradually uh shifting from you know a smaller polygon to a larger you don't want to do uh you know you don't want to do something like this 
when you have two small polygons and a large one because again this could create some problems on a curved surface and i guarantee you that this one will deform very cleanly another thing you need to learn in sub d is going to be changing the number of polygons on one side of the mesh or number of edges let's say that i want to add a loop here for some reason because i want to create a smaller detail here and you can see that this loop is going into my corner which is actually going to impact how this corner is uh, shaded because we are introducing another edge here in the middle and this is going to be a problem so what i might want to do is well, i might want to terminate this you know somewhere here and uh, but if I, if I do that uh, i'm going to end up with an end gone so what you might want to learn is how to uh, change the flow of your topology uh, in situation like this and there are many ways of doing this you can add another loop here so i could just uh, subdivide this one and another loop here and then simply run uh, my edges like this right and you could dissolve this uh, edge here and create a diamond you never want to create situation like that because this is going to be a quad but it's going to overshoot on itself because he has three angles that are sharp and one is very wide you don't want that you always want it to have all the corners facing outside yeah like this so just move it like that create like a diamond and then you have four quads flowing into two and you terminate this loop another way of doing this would be to select this and simply insert it like this right? and then i'm going to run edge here so press c to cut through a and cut through and then simply remove these um, these edges and what you end up here with you got this inner loop um, which you can then adjust you know to make it a little bit more even right just move it in the middle and you're good to go and it's going to actually create a kind of like a gonna create like a loop here in the middle you can insert another loop in here around and for example you could elevate this right so let's say we wanted to extrude it or you know move it up like this and create another loop in here and uh, you know you're good to go so you got a smaller detail here and this loop is not being redirected into your corner the last thing i want to show you is about some um, angles um, of edges and here you can see that uh, we have the you know 90 degrees angles everywhere but here we have this kind of like an open um, angle and um, and here also we have different angles as well but these two edges are straight okay this could potentially cause some problems with shading on curved surfaces so what you want to do in this situation is remove these two and reintroduce them with kind of like a more natural flow that follows the angles of these surrounding edges okay and you could maybe grab this one and gradually kind of ease it off and so it kind of matches more uh, this angle here and this one matches you know this angle here so this is really important because it's going to kind of ease off this flow and transition from this um, perpendicular angle here to more of a slanted angle and then back into perpendicular again so uh, this is also important if you're kind of cleaning up your mesh at the end when you finish doing all the details you might want to do that to create a really nice and clean topology okay so this will be you know super anal topology in terms of like curving but again if you're for example working on flat surfaces this is really not necessary uh, because on flat surfaces you can even have end guns it doesn't really matter uh, if i subdivide this nothing's gonna change even if i'm gonna have a massive end gun here uh, because um you know because it's a flat surface however if you go to mesh preview so i'm gonna go to settings wireframe and I'm going to go to modifier and uh, turn this off. You will see we're going to get this nasty stretching of the mesh. And that's because we have an end gun. And we also have an even sized topology. So if I'm going to, you know, go back here and control Z that. Now you can see that the uh, topology fl flows very nicely. And subdivision is very evenly spread. So uh, if, you know, you need to have evenly spread and sized topology for your mesh this is how you do it but like i said on flat surfaces you really don't you know you really don't have to you can have massive angles and it's still the shading gonna hold uh, because it's a flat surface okay so anyway guys that's it i hope it helps you out uh, this is literally all you need to know about a sub d now the rules are simple but like i said practicing them and actually uh, being able to create sub d shapes with ease requires a bit of practice because sub d is much more 
um, abstract and uh, a little bit more complex to build with because you not only need to employ your creative side of your brain but also the logical side because it's kind of like a puzzle so it's a bit more of an anal type of modeling right because you know boolean modeling is very intuitive you just slap booleans and you can see the shape growing very quickly but uh, working with with subdivision is much slower i have uh, models which i created in nine minutes and with sub d the same model would take me 40 minutes so it's several times longer because you need to you know pay attention to how this topology flows and how everything looks okay all right guys well thanks for watching and like i said in the beginning if you want to learn hard surface modeling we have a free course called jumpstart hard surface modeling in blender so you model and welcome to grab it it's free the link is in the video description and the course will teach you everything you need to know all the basics in just a few hours and it's going to give you a really nice foundation for understanding how things work in hard surface how to use blender and how to create your own projects so you can take it from there Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.